tensions in the High Court in Pretoria today as the state witness Zandi Kumalo was being grilled by defense lawyers in the Senzo Meiwa murder trial. Kumalo and Zutulele Ngumalo, who's representing accused number four, went head to head. The judge, Rata Mukhwateng, had to tell them to respect the decorum of the court. Our reporter, Mangoba Mkunu, was in court and joins us now just to give us an update about what really happened while the emotions were running high. What caused that, Mangoba Mkunu? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Patan. In fact, uh, what really caused this uh, was uh, the cross-examination that was continuing in court. Of course, you recall that uh, the advocate representing accused number four had been continuing with this cross-examination here in court, trying to point out to inconsistencies between Zali Lekumalo's uh, evidence in court as well as the statements that she had deposed to police between 2014 and 2018. And one of the issues that came out was around her evidence in court uh, where she claimed that uh, she had frozen after one of the intruders had pointed a firearm at her which is something that uh, she did not mention in any of her statements. Uh, she had then responded uh, to that particular line of questioning, saying that this is something that she had told the police at the time, and it's the police that uh, either did not find it important or did not include it, and it was really beyond her control that this was not in that particular statement. The other issue that she was also quizzed on was around uh, the claims uh, that she had made uh, that she had tried uh, to assault uh, accused number two uh, at the time. This is the evidence that she had given to the court, but in a statement uh, she alluded to the fact that uh, she had actually assaulted accused number two in the head and Zitulele uh, Ngumalo, who is the, uh, the lawyer for accused number four, pointing out that this was in fact uh, not truthful and that uh, this was one of the inconsistencies that Zandile Kumalo had relayed to this particular court. And I think we saw emotions running high uh, when, uh, of course, she was being asked also on the suspect that she had identified through the identity parade that was held back in 2014. I think uh, Zandile Kumalo at one point saying uh, to uh, Zitulele Ngumalo that uh, she, he cannot shout at her and that uh, she cannot be scolded by him, she's not his wife, and uh, she would really want him uh, to address her in a polite manner. And I think that's when we heard Judge Rata Mohwetling intervening as far as that is concerned, appealing for calm and saying that uh, they should respect the decorum of the court. And of course, it was not the only incident where we saw, but then tempers flaring as far as evidence is concerned. Also, when advocate Zandile Msholo was questioning Zandile Kumalo, we saw at one point uh, Zandile Kumalo insisting uh, to her that uh, she should be allowed allowed a uh, time to respond to the questions and that she had not finished uh, to relay uh, the information that she had been trying to relay at the point. I think uh, Advocate Zandi Lemshololo also just appealing to the court to intervene as far as that is concerned. So certainly there were a lot of uh, moments where we saw tempers uh, flaring up as far as this cross-examination is concerned. But of course we know that uh, Advocate Zandi Lemshololo has not concluded her testimony yet. She's expected to continue tomorrow, Pradhan. Okay, it's going to continue tomorrow. And we saw at some point, that if you can take us through what really happened when Tulele uh, Ngumalo, advocates Tulele Ngumalo, went for the jugular on what he was describing he believes happened that night. Tell us more. Well, one of the contentions uh, from advocates Zitulele Ngumalo is that uh, the people that were in the house, in fact, were responsible for shooting and killing Senzo Meiwa. And uh, I think one of the arguments that advanced in court was that there were no robberies uh, or no robbers that came into the house on that night. And in fact, that, uh, you know, there were no intruders uh, that had come into the house. And uh, he says basically that it's the people in the house that know what happened uh, when Senzo Meiwa was shot and killed on that night. And I think uh, this also, uh, you know, flared up emotions a bit with Zandile Kumalo, who insisted that uh, she has told the court 
uh, the reality and the truth of what had happened on that particular night and that, uh, you know, no matter how many times uh, the defense can try uh, to put this, uh, she insists that uh, the people inside the house were not responsible and that none of them uh, know what really happened. Uh, there was a scuffle that broke, into, and that broke out in the house just moments before Senzo Meiwa was killed. And in fact, uh, she insists that, uh, you know, she would not lie to the court. She did not come all this way uh, to give misrepresentations or to lie to the court as far as what is ha uh, what happened on that night is concerned. She insists, Pratan, that in fact she sticks to a story that uh, it was in fact an argument and uh, a scuffle that broke out in the house that resulted in a Senzo Meiwa being shot and killed. But perhaps let's take a listen to what she had to say when this question was put to her. Madam, uh, I will give it to you that as I have been the pressure of putting you earlier, that you and other leaders, this is your mother and Tony's trial, had this tendency of pointing out an innocent person within it in order to avoid a suggestion which I'm going to make to you that the deceased was killed by the person who was in the house. And there was no robbery there. And we did not stop at the same time. I have a question. You can tell me 50 times if this is a matter of the political life. So, what do I end the show? Do you want to get a What do you send? I'll send you this. Okay, you can put it to me 50 times uh, until the phone comes out of your mouth. I think that makes you sleep at night, if I don't say it. Is that uh, people, they were intruders, and they shot Senzo. Uh, I'm not pretending on that. Well, Mangoba, Zandile Kumbalo's evidence around accused number two was also at the center of the cross-examination by advocate Mshololo and really casting doubt about her evidence. Tell us about that. Well, but you recall last week that, uh, in fact, Zandile Kumalo had pointed uh, to Bongani Tanzi as being one of the intruders that was in the house. And, in fact, uh, her evidence in court was that she had had a good look at him and she was able to identify some of the features. Uh, in fact, she says uh, she is quite sure that he was one of the intruders who was inside the house. Uh, I think her evidence, uh, she had mentioned the fact that uh, at the time, Bongani Tanzi had been wearing a hoodie and that uh, he was tall in stature and also uh, he was, uh, you know, not somebody who had, uh, you know, a fat uh, body. Uh, he was slim, in fact, uh, she had put it to the court. But of course, this was a question uh, during uh, uh, Zandile Mshololo's uh, cross-examination as to how really uh, Zandile Kumalo was able uh, to identify Bongani Tanzi, given the fact that she had failed uh, to identify that he had been carrying uh, a weapon. Uh, this, of course, was in contrast to what was said by one of the witnesses, Dumelo Madala, who had deposed uh, uh, a statement uh, that uh, spoke uh, to, uh, uh, in fact, this uh, second suspect that entered the house, having carried a weapon. And uh, Zanilem Shololo was uh, really asking uh, Kumalo as to how she could see his face uh, when uh, she, however, could not tell. Uh, you know, uh, that he was carrying a weapon and that perhaps this was just a mere fabrication, uh, the fact that uh, this was, uh, in fact, Bungani Tanzi that was in the house on that particular night, uh, saying that, uh, you know, again, advancing that particular point that uh, possibly it was one of the people that was inside the house that was responsible for this shooting that had occurred. But um, perhaps, Pierre, we can also take a listen to how that particular argument went on. And the reason why you are failing to give a full description of the hurt of the second suspect, including the color of the hood that the second suspect was wearing, is because there was no second suspect. You are fabricating the story. That's what you are saying, advocating Shola, not me. 
And I don't think I would come where, from wherever I'm coming from just to come and get bored here in court. And lie to the court. In this encounter, in Kandola Man. Advocate Zandi Lemsholo there questioning uh, Zandi Lekumalo, who will continue on the witness stand when the Senzo Meiwa murder trial resumes tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning in the High Court in Pretoria. Ending that update from uh, 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 our, our reporter there on the ground, Mangoba Nkunu.